What's happening, everybody? Okay, so we're doing lab exercise 12 here, introduction to JavaScript. So we're just going to get straight into it. So hopefully you've known, you know, JavaScript is for doing active code in web pages, and we're going to do some basic examples about that. Once again, I have to go with the caveat that JavaScript is very, very picky, much more picky than HTML, in fact, right? So if HTML, if there are errors in the code, the page will try to show what it can, whatever works correctly. JavaScript, because of potential security issues with misformed JavaScript code, JavaScript errors tend to make a lot or all of the JavaScript code on the page unusable. So it's very, very important that you get every little letter and character just right, or you know things will go off the rails. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our this, right our basic uh try it editor on uh, w3 schools there it is i'm just going to lift it straight from the text okay and we'll bring out edge okay and to the put it here make sure that works great kaboom okay so the content there goes straight to the browser whatever is what it is and we're going to put some code in there so all this, we're just gonna copy and paste straight here into the left panel. Uh, we're gonna put it here. We'll leave doc type. In fact, we'll do it here inside body. That's fine. Do it there. All right, so when we run this, it displays all this. We have some text about sun conures. It's a kind of parrot. And there's some buttons below that do nothing at this point. I can click these buttons at this point, nothing happens. All right. So with JavaScript, you can change some elements in our page. For example, changes that happen when you click a button. Typically that's done with what's called the onClick property of an HTML tag. So to do that, we'll give an example. So the general format onClick equals, and then some statement in quotes. So the object, the, the web thing that you have, for example, if we did with label, right? OnClick equals something. And whatever action is supposed to happen when you click on that button, right, this label button here, that's what goes inside the quotes after on click. All right, so this one, right, we're going to use the statement this dot inner HTML equals new label. All right, so very simple. We're going to put this. Okay, and we're going to, I think we have to put in another quote at the end. Okay. And what that's going to do for a label tag, the inner HTML, or for a button rather, is the text that's between the opening and closing tag of the button. So I'm changing that text from label to new label. So if I run this, now when I click label, ta da, the text automatically updates to new label. So I have created some dynamic content on my page. When I interact with the page, something different happens. All right. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning, just you know, to avoid, as always, things going off the rails, HTML doesn't really distinguish between single quotes or double quotes, but JavaScript does. So it's pretty important, uh, or rather, JavaScript doesn't uh, distinguish between single and double quotes, but HTML does. So if you want to keep the two separate, and I guarantee that you do, Easy rule of thumb, always use single quotes for your JavaScript code, always use double quotes for your HTML, right? Because otherwise, what could happen, like if you use double quotes for all this, it's not gonna work the way you think it should, right? Because what it'll think is, this is the command because this is enclosed in double quotes. This is what's gonna happen when you click on it, but this statement is malformed and nothing's gonna happen. And then this here is just gonna kind of be code garbage that isn't going to affect anything. So you don't wanna do it like that, okay? Single quotes for JavaScript and all this stuff here, this is a little bit of JavaScript here, actually. You wanna leave that inside single quotes, keep the double quotes for HTML. All right, so that's what we've done there. Ta -da, and we click the label button and it works the way it's supposed to. Now, another thing, IDs. So if you want to change an object, uh, first you have to have some kind of name that you can use for it. For example, uh, if there's an object on the web page called thing, I can change its attribute. I can reference it by saying 
you know, document dot get element by ID thing. And then it'll look for whatever web, whatever HTML tag I've identified with that label thing. And then I can change some attribute of it. So for example, okay, I first want to uh, change, I want to give something a tag, right? So in the first sentence, insert the following HTML tag, right? Font ID, ID equals D1 slash font. Okay, this is not really anything that's going to do anything. But I'm going to put it here. So we have this font tag. Fonts don't always work. They're for an older version of HTML, but we still have access to them. Now, if I change D1's inner HTML attribute, I can make text appear, right? So here, the button Latin right there. All right, I'm going to replace that with this line. And now I'll walk through it a little bit. Okay, so here I have another button. I've created an on click attribute. And what happens if I click it, it'll find this object on the page that has the ID D1, and that's this font tag here. It has the ID D1, and I'm going to change its uh, inner HTML to the Latin name for the sun conure. Ta da! Okay, very nice. So let's run this, right? And when I press Latin, ta da, there, I get the Latin for it up there. That's something. Okay, now you can do more complex JavaScript, obviously. This is all very basic stuff. Uh, in many cases, you'll have scripts with multiple statements grouped into what are called functions. So if you have a JavaScript function, it's basically gonna look like this. You'll have a script tag, then you'll have the name of the function, then you'll have what are called parameters that accepts that it accepts. So any data you send along with the function call. For example, if you have a function call to print something, the parameters might be the actual text that you're going to print, or maybe a source file that contains the text, and then the uh, tag will read from it. So uh, the function call, again, can be triggered like a click. You can have an on-click attribute that calls a function, for example. We're going to do, or it could be a timer, things like that. We'll do both of those in this exercise. All right. So general format of a function call, when you want to tell the function to do something, is use the name of the function and then any arguments you send along. Arguments are any data you're sending along to the function. So they're the, you know, the logical equivalent of parameters that are getting received. So an argument is data you're sending to a function call. Parameters are data that the function call, the function is actually receiving in order to run properly. All right, so we're gonna give this opening paragraph here, this P, we're gonna give it an ID attribute P1. Okay, so ID equals P1. And then in the tag for the color button, we're gonna include the property on click equals G and make sure you get the semicolon in there, right? So here for the button on click equals and inside quotes G, okay? So that's gonna call that function G whenever the button is clicked. And we don't have a G function yet. So we're gonna to have to include that in the script tag somewhere. All right, so at the end of the HTML code, right? we can put that uh, here after the body, we're gonna include this line. I'm just gonna lift it straight here from the document. It's gonna be a script tag. Okay, so our function G says document.getElementById P1. So we're gonna find this P1 thing and we're gonna change its style color to red, right? So that's pretty much it. So whatever we have there, it's gonna appear as red. And so D1 is gonna be this first paragraph. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow, the color all switched to red, incredible. All right, it's like magic. Okay, other stuff you can do, you can include variables in JavaScript. Uh, I call it var, var short for variable. Many people call it var age things, what can you say? Uh, but a variable is just a uh, container for some sort of data, right? Anything you want your code to remember, like uh, the memory on a calculator. Okay, so to specify some variable named x, for example, in JavaScript, first you declare it as a var, so var x, and then you can give it various initial values. So it could be var x, or you could say var x equals zero to assign it with an initial value. Or you can have floating point numbers like 1.1, or true or false, like false here, or some st text string enclosed in uh, single quotes here, some text. Now, some programs are what are called strongly typed, where is if you create a container that has a certain structure, whether it's a floating point number 
or an integer or a text string, it's going to be handled differently and it's going to be a little bit difficult to change from one to another. JavaScript is designed to not hassle you too much with that. What it's supposed to do is just say, yeah, this is a container for data. If you want to change what kind of data is stored there, that's fine. It's still going to be a variable. Anyway, it's, this makes sense because most JavaScript script programs are simple enough that they don't need to be super optimized as far as memory allocation. Uh, for other programs that might be bigger, more ambitious, then yeah, at some point memory uh, management is going to become an issue and it becomes important to use it more efficiently. Okay. Anyway, here's our action. Following the HTML code already in place, add the code below. All right, it's going to add two blank lines, create two buttons, create a variable X with an initial value of zero and include a function that increments X, right? Increases it by one and displays the new value every time it's called, right? So I'm just going to lift this code, put it here, do, 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 and paste it there, okay? So it's a little bit, little bit more code. I should put that inside the body, actually. I'll do it, I'll put it inside the body. Okay, so here I have a button, okay? That says add, another button that says value. So we can run this. There we go. We got our other two buttons. Now, every time I click on one, I click on the button that says add. It's going to call this function f. Okay. And what f does, f accepts a parameter y. Okay. And what we send along is this value x. Well, x is initialized to zero. It's right here in this script. X is initialized to zero. And I'll put the script down after the body of the document. So X is initialized to zero. And so if I click on this uh, add, it's gonna call uh, function F here. It's gonna send along X, X will be received and called Y within the function. Then I'm gonna say X equals Y plus one. So whatever you know X used to be, I'm gonna add one to it and assign that back to F. And then I'm gonna put that value, right? This uh, ID val here, I'm gonna assign the new value of X as the inner HTML that'll appear here instead of value, okay? So if I run this, I just do add one, two, three, right? The button used to say val, but now it just increases the number. Okay, another thing you can do is timers, right? So sometimes you want a timer for your web page, and JavaScript is all about timers. So there's an inherent function called set interval that combines basically a function call and a periodicity value, right? So every so often this function is going to automatically be called. So when you call the set interval function, you can enclose uh, an unnamed function, right? Uh, you enclose an end function and its statements as the first argument and the periodicity as the second one. So whatever you want to do, you can say, yeah, every so often call this function and you know, do it at intervals following. Okay, so this one, the following code specifies a button with an ID of B. When it gets clicked, calls, uh, calls, that's weird, calls the function H, which uses the set interval function with an interval of 100 sec milliseconds. So every tenth of a second, the current time is going to be incremented and used to build a text variable Y. All right, so here we have this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this here. And we'll talk about it in a second. Okay. Um, let's leave this. I'll, this I'll put up here. Put that in the body of the document. So two more things. So when I run this, this creates a timer. When I press timer, okay, it's going to call this H function. All right. And we'll see what H does. What H does, call set interval with some function that, you know, we don't have to worry about what it is at this point. What it's going to do is this. It's going to create a variable y with the uh, with as a string with a text time plus x divided by 10. So whatever x is, it's going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, whatever. If x modulo 10 is 0, that means if x is evenly divisible by 10, then we're going to follow it with 0, 0.0, right? And so, you know, either y is going to be time plus x divided by 10, right? So if it's, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, then y equals y plus 
this uh, S, right? S is just for seconds. So it's gonna continuously update and it'll perpetual, what did I? Yeah, okay. Then it's going to find that uh, element HTML tag on the document who has the IDB. Well, the IDB here is right here, this button. Once I click timer, it's gonna perpetually update it with the value of whatever the string is. There it goes, da, 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 da. zips along doing that thing. Okay, easy. So that's the exercise. Now, if you wanna try a few things on your own, if you're feeling like trying something different, uh, you could add, for example, the following line, image ID equals square and the source equals red square dot JPEG. If you wanted to try and see if you can figure out how to have it, that image flip to blue square. Basically what you're going to do is have on the click of something, right? Whatever it may be on click, uh, change the object source, you know, get element by ID square dot SRC equals instead of red square, say equals blue square. Anyway, if you want to play a little bit more with JavaScript, go ahead, give that a try, see if you can get that working. Anyway, this is it. That's lab exercise 12. Very quick introduction to JavaScript. Okay. And thank you for your attendance. Thank you for your attention.